Hi, it's Johnny Marks. Thank you so much for checking out the Marks in the Morning podcast. Remember, you can listen to myself, Carrie Mack, and JP weekdays from 6 to 10 live on K92.3. Get out of bed. It's time to get your day started. This is Marks in the Morning on K92.3. Can I get a countdown? Can I get a countdown? Here we are, here we go, almost a weekend. It's Friday, Junior, on Marks in the Morning. Good morning. It's uh, 6 o'clock, 6.01. And not too bad, we have 40 degrees right now. Today's kind of the cool day. We're not even going to get above 50, or if we do, it'll be very, very close. So, uh, yeah, spring may be here, but not quite the super warm weather yet. We're doing some gardening this summer. I say we because it'll be my wife. But <laughs> she's growing. I like how you use we. Well, I'll go out there and... and uh, watch. <laughs> well, we, we'll add an E and a D. I'll go out there and weed. I'll pull the weeds out with her, but that's about it. And then I'll eat some of it. But we're growing hot peppers this year. We're actually going to try to grow yeah. habaneros. Oh. And so a couple weeks ago, if you follow me on Instagram, I ate, I, we went to Hy-Vee and I bought a habanero and I realized, oh, these are a little hotter than I thought. And when you grow something at home they're always hotter than what they are at the grocery store so she's like oh well now i regret it because she's already started them in little plants you pot them inside so you just transplant them outside uh so we're gonna get some fresno peppers too those are more mild those are like uh, jalapenos wow what a baby what do no, you want a baby oh i agree i i thought i was all tough because i love jalapenos yeah so i bought habaneros and I, I think i made chili with them I had to throw the chili out. I oh, could it's not. What? It's I could, brutal. It's just way it's too brutal. hot. Yeah. Yeah. I bet I could eat one. Give oh, me one. that I'll challenge. Eat I'll you eat want? it. No, you're, you have to do it after the show because otherwise you won't talk the whole show. You'll be in pain. Yeah. Seriously. I will bring you in one. I'm not trying to give them a free plug, but if you go to hy V, there's a big section of peppers over in the mm-hmm. veggies. It's like three ninety nine for a pound. Well, nobody would buy a pound of habaneros unless they had a death wish. So you can get one for like 22 cents. And they're cute one. little peppers, you know. They, oh, they yeah, look innocent sweet. until you try one. They are sweet until you bite in. Then there's nothing sweet about mm. them. But if you, I have one in the fridge right now. I'll bring it tomorrow. It's uh, Friday. If you want your whole weekend ruined tomorrow, then sure. Will it I'll ruin it. my entire it's, weekend? Was it, it that bad It'll ruin about an hour of your life. An hour? It's yeah. technically Friday because your taste buds will be fried. There you go. Ah. Oh, seriously. <laughs> they're rough. I will bring, I'll bring it in. Just um, I'll set myself a reminder. All right. Well, we got a lot on the show today. Gender Bender, a chance for you to win some free food from McDonald's. They do have a spicy crispy chicken sandwich, but I promise you, because I've had it, it will not burn your face off. It's a tasty spicy. We also have uh, a lot more, including the Throwback Thursday Throwdown. You can vote now if you want, uh, a little bit later on this morning here, within the next 25, maybe 30 minutes. I'll let you know which songs are available. <laughs> In case you're driving, were you? This is K92.3. Uh, Carrie back. do you have it pulled up? Somebody made a comment about our habanero situation. Yes, Daniel says he uses a pound of habaneros to make salsa every year. Wow, uh, good man. Crazy man. I mean, if he's making like a keg's worth of salsa, that'd be nice and diluted. But if, I'm just thinking in a few jars, that would be incredibly hot. Yeah, yeah. I, you take a bite of, uh, of a hot pepper straight, you're going to regret it. You just are. Even a jalapeno. And I know there's some people going, well, that's wussy. But if you're not a spice fan. <laughs> that's wussy. But if you're not a spice fan, just a bite of a habanero, or I'm sorry, a, um, a jalapeno could ruin your day. Uh, there are people that love, when you get nachos at a ball game, do you ask for the jalapeno slices or do yes. you forego? I do yeah. too. Uh, and those are always really mild because they've been bathed in like some juice. They're like pickled almost. Yeah. Yeah. But for some people, that's enough to go, no, 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 I don't want to touch that. So, you know, teach their own. It's a little different. Uh, Carrie, are you a Spice fan? We really got into this. I love the Spice Girls. Oh, um, yeah. I'm, it depends on the occasion. If I have a, if it tastes good, I'll like the Spice. But if it's, uh, like, I had my dad's sauce that one day, remember? Yeah, that's good stuff. And I, yeah, that is good. I wasn't a fan of the sauce. No offense, Dad. Sorry. But so it seemed more spicy to me because I didn't like the taste of it. Well, we'll pose the question to you. Johnny asked me, do you get the jalapenos on nachos? Do you get them? <laughs> no. No, you don't But like you want to eat a habanero tomorrow? I like yeah. the challenge, <laughs> JP. Right. I don't have a lot going I, on. I will bring it in. I promise you this, though. You'll regret that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely do not pop the whole thing in your mouth. Oh, my God. Gnawing away on it. Doing CPR. I, know I, I know I won't do that. I'm going to have a glass of milk right next to me so I can, like, tuck myself in at night. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> is that what you have before you're, bed? You no, know, not me. It'll make me sick. But <laughs> milk in general is something you're supposed to have with spice. Yeah. Water is, makes it worse because mm-hmm. it just moves it around your mouth. But milk is coating. 
So we'll get you some whole milk because you're going to need it. Oh, whole, whole milk. milk. Oh, yeah. Habanero and milk combined, that's just a sickening thought. doesn't sound very oh. good, does it? The snack that smiles back. Hi, <laughs> It's Mark's in the morning. A lot of people, I mean, we're all over the COVID pandemic, but are you over working from home? If you are still working from home, I want to tell you what the downsides are. There was a study put out. We've all heard the upsides. I can work in my PJs. I don't have to drive. I don't have to spend money on gas. Gas is starting to inch up again. Blah, 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 blah. We all know that. But what are the downsides to working from home? This survey, courtesy of your boss who wants you back at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Before we get to random facts, uh, coming up here at about 630, I got to tell you something. Have you ever, first and foremost, have you ever done this where you send a text message or even an email to the wrong person? I'm sure we've all done this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that happened to me yesterday, except I was the one receiving the text message. It came from my father. It was supposed to go to my mother-in-law, and I found something out that I didn't know about and probably should have known about. So I'll tell you, coming up here at 6.30 on Mark's In the Morning, and then my dad quickly changed the subject. <laughs> he had to tell me a little something more than he wanted to, but then he very quickly changed the subject. All right, let's get to... Need a conversation starter? Here are some random facts. We well, all know the perks of working from home. Many people have continued to work from home during the pandemic, and some will continue right on through at least the first half of this year. But what are some of the downsides to working from home? A new survey reveals exactly what those are, but I'm not going to bring up the, you know, my pet or my kid or whatever, like you see in those viral videos where somebody walks in on the frame when they're on a Zoom call. Let's skip all that and just go to some of the other downsides that are actually work, work related. Number one, people complain about having to use their own personal computer for work, which is interesting because you'd think if you had a work computer, you'd bring it home. Everybody has a laptop. We all three have laptops that we carry with us when we're not working. And if something goes wrong and we have to use it at home, you use them at home. You're not using your personal computer. Mm -hmm. But apparently that was the number one complaint. And then drawing off of that, number two is the computer sucks. So the software crashes while you're in the (laughs) middle of something. I guess if we all have personal computers, we probably don't rely on them to be as powerful as our work computers, right? I don't know. If you're going to complain about, first of all, you're working... Are they? Are these people complain because they think their work should get them a computer rather than? I mean, they're going to be using it anyways. It could be like a a low key complaint yeah, about the actual business they work yeah. for. Mm. Number three was in general not having all the hardware or software to do your job. This really depends on what your job is. Look, if you're a graphic designer and you're working from home with an inferior computer, I can see that being a real issue because there's so many. So much that you need your computer to be able to do. And if it's slow or frozen and you're a creative person, you just want to move right along. But uh, number four, dealing with tech support over the phone. These are the uh, downsides to working from home. Yeah. And number five, having to start something over because of tech issues. So these are all tech related. But those are the number, the five biggest downsides to working from home. According to people who are still doing it. I would... I just don't understand, though, the whole computer thing. Just use your work computer. I think lack of motivation would be the number one thing. Mm -hmm. If you're working from home and you don't get out of your PJs until 2 in the afternoon or at all, I wouldn't feel like working. Do you think, though, that for some people it goes the opposite way and they actually work more because they can't detach? For example, I'll bring up an example that, that I could use here in radio. One of our sister stations, we have a, a program that comes in in the afternoon, right? I don't have to put it together. I don't have to work on it that day. So like today, I could leave before it comes in because it won't air till tomorrow. But I'll often at least start on it to save myself time. Now, if I'm working from home, why not just keep going? I can, in my head, think, well, I don't have to drive home. You know, my drive home isn't terrible, but in the winter it wasn't fun and you just want to get it over with. Well, I don't have to blah, blah, blah because I'm already home. I don't have to feed the cats. If you have kids, well, you know, the kids are already having dinner. Do you think that people actually work harder from home? Or not harder, but more hours? I think so. It's similar to doing online schooling, I think, because you there's a certain line, a certain barrier that comes with being at home or being at work or being at school that seems to, like, merge and kind of blend together. Yeah. I will, I will purposely come in on the weekends because I know I have to work. If I'm just at home, I get so sidetracked. I'll, yeah. like, oh, I'll just turn the TV on while I'm working. I can't do that. I can't I, do two things at once. I get both of those things. I do also like to come in on the weekends because I feel like I'm more motivated to get things done. And I'm in a workspace. 
but if I have to do it from home, I can. But you're right. I'm a lot pokier. Mm -hmm. All right, interesting. Well, we'll be back in a couple minutes. I'll tell you the story about what's going on with my dad. He accidentally sent me a text message intended for my stepmom, his wife, yesterday. And oh, boy. Why don't you go wow, wow. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a clue. It wasn't that. We'll get to it coming up. Hang on. I'm Luke Combs, and here today I was uh, sitting in my office. I after the show is done, I spend most of my day sitting in my office. Very good for me. <laughs> hey, JP always go. You go on these little power walks around the building. Our building is virtually abandoned, and uh, you go what up to the fourth floor, fifth floor, or on the third floor. And every now and then you'll see a person, and you're like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I always tell you right away. I'm like, "Someone was on the eighth floor, Johnny," and you're just like, "I don't care." <laughs> I'm not. I don't care. I just did. You it's, see a ghost or what? Well, it's creepy. I'll hear footsteps, and then you don't expect it because I'm usually the only one on every floor. Yes, you usually yeah. are. You're the only one power walking like a grandma at a mall. I can't, I can't sit. I just get tired. No, I hear you. No, I, I should be doing that. It's probably healthy. Even now I'm pacing. I'm standing up just rocking back and forth. You are. That caffeine is kicking in. <laughs> I'm getting seasick look, looking at you. Anyways, I was just at my desk, and every now and then my dad will message me. Sometimes he picks really bad times to text me, and I just don't respond until I'm done with work. Yesterday I happened to be, I can't remember what I was doing, but I was waiting for something to download or I was in a meeting. And he texted me. But what was interesting is on my iPhone, probably the same way on an Android, you get a little preview of the text, and it was a photo. So I tapped on it. It looked like a tweet. Talking about tweeter. It was not. It was a screenshot of something his doctor sent him. Now, for privacy reasons, I won't say what, but he was prescribed a drug that is for pain. And then, then below it, he wrote, I will get a refill. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't know you got this to begin with. And then he very quickly said that was for, and then he said my stepmom's name. And then he had to explain to me because I just found out he was getting a refill and there was a lot more to the message. But for privacy reasons, I'll leave it there. So he told me he threw out his back last week and was in the ER on the, during the weekend, last uh, weekend. And oh, you had no idea. no idea. No, I texted him last weekend. I actually had a question for him about something and he never responded. And I thought, well, that's weird. My dad lives on his phone. And as a retired man, he'll often, you know, one kid's in college. His wife often has activities with her friends. He's almost always just waiting for a text. But I didn't think that hard. I thought it was a weekend. Maybe they went somewhere as a family. Whatever. Now it makes sense. But he didn't tell me. He Not only didn't he tell me, but he didn't plan to. I had to find out through an accidental text message that my poor dad, who's had a history of back problems, was laid up. In the hospital or something, he still really didn't fill me in. I always love it when you get the whoops text and you f reply back before they get a chance to like, uh oh, yeah, yeah. where where you almost bust them, where like <laughs> you send back just question marks and they're like, oh shoot, that wasn't that wasn't meant for you. I'm like, well, too bad. Yeah, you now I know. Yeah, now well, I, I want the story. And I got home and I told my wife and she said, well, why didn't you ask him for more info? And Man. Like, and I said, well, it wasn't supposed to be for me. And he very quickly changed. You know what his next text was after he gave me a very short description of what happened with the ER thing? He's like, I'm getting my second COVID vaccine tomorrow. I was like, I know that already. <laughs> trying to ch How about those twins next week? Yeah. He's <laughs> desperately trying to change the subject. That'll put me in traction. <laughs> oh, my but gosh. Yeah, I, well, exactly. And Hannah said, well, you, got, you can press him on it. He told you he's your father. And I said, he told me because he made a mistake <laughs> and sent to the wrong person. Oh, my gosh. Why do dads do that or parents in general? They just don't tell you things and then it randomly yeah. comes up later and on. And they'd be PO'd if you did yes. that. Yeah, it's so strange. Oh, this happened to me too and i was making my parents feel bad about something and then they gave me this information i was like why are you telling me this now you're, you're just guilting me right. I, I think it's a it, it's a very parenting thing to do because you don't want your children to worry even if i'm hurt at, i mean if paper cut or something i don't want my kids to, it's more for me with younger children it's more of a question thing if if they know something's wrong with dad, they'll ask me fifty questions. I'm like, I, I don't want to deal with that. That's not I, what happened with my, no, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand that from from a perspective of very young kids who don't understand. Like if I were any of your three kids' age, even your daughter who's about to go into high school, you maybe would have a valid reason. But I'm you know thirty eight and. His only son. He has two, you know, two beautiful girls that he adopted. I'm his only son, his first and his only birth child. So I feel like 
if I lived a little closer, he would. Do you think he would have told these? Because you know, I would have driven he, up there, or do you think it would have been? I don't know. Did I think, distance make an issue. I think he would have told you because this happened. My situation happened when I was in college. So, and I was like two and a half hours away. So, like I couldn't know. So that's the same thing with you. You probably would have driven by your dad's house and been like, "Hmm, where's dad? He's yeah. in the ER." Or use you for a ride. My parents are in Grundy Center, so if they need to go to the doctor, they're not familiar with the roads in Waterloo Cedar Falls. So yeah. I will usually have to give them a ride. I've, I've had. My dad doesn't, he's not injury prone. The last time he was in the hospital, the ER was for a kidney stone. And they had to tell me and my wife because we were heading up for a birthday party. And so we're like, well, it's canceled. Of course, that's a kidney stone and you recover very quickly from those. But I did as a kid have to drive him to hernia surgery. And he, I remember him picking, I picked him up and he was fine. He's like, you know, I'm fine. It doesn't hurt. But I remember him looking at me and saying, this will be you one day. And now, <laughs> now I'm thinking the back issue will be me one day. So oh, no. He should have told me if for nothing else because it probably runs in the family. Ah, wow. Oh, my gosh. All right. We've got to scoot along here, but uh, just food for thought. We're actually going to get into this a little bit more. Not not my dad's injury, but what lies have you told your kids? And maybe, like JP said, maybe you're not talking about something in your life, so it's more of like avoiding reality, or maybe it's a flat-out... If you don't go to bed at a certain time, a monster will get you. One of those types of things. <laughs> you know, they range. They will? If I go to bed too late, a monster's going to get yes. you, Johnny? Yes, it's called I have to work the next day oh. and be a functional human being. It's called a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> the adult monster. Uh, so we'll get into that after 7. But we'll be back in just a few with Dirk Smedley and Nashville News. Margaritas could you buy for $10,000? Probably a lot. But there is um, one cocktail that you would be able to buy for $10,000, but you'd only be able to buy it once. It's Mark's in the morning. Our cash cow is coming back. <laughs> and you have a chance to win up to $10,000. Listen to this. London has a club. Now, I don't know if it's open during COVID, but it's called the Playboy Club. It's a legendary cocktail club and you know obviously they have cocktails other than the one i'm about to tell you about but it's very well known for one particular drink that costs eight thousand eight hundred thirty dollars it uses 240 year old ingredients because that sounds appealing <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a blend of vintage ingredients the cocktail is uh has been dubbed salvatore's legacy i guess that's the name of the, the drink Basically, it's made from a lot of old alcohol. It doesn't even come with a little cool umbrella or anything, but it'll run you eight thousand plus dollars. I wouldn't buy one of those, but I definitely would spend some ten of my ten thousand on uh, alcohol. Carry back. What would you buy with ten k? There's always been a part. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's in pain. Every time you say ten k, yeah, you get the cow. Well, if I had ten k. Okay, no more cash cow than I guess. <laughs> I was waiting on the cow sound effect. Oh, I'm sorry. Do it again. Uh, so I if slipped. I had 10K. Right. It was literally like three seconds after Johnny says, every time you say it, you hear the cow. And well, you said it. And he's, he's like looking break. out the studio door. He's not even paying attention. No, I'm listening. I just didn't catch the 10K. <laughs> I'd buy a new host who would pay attention to me. Jeez oh, Louise. I see how it goes. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry. That's unacceptable. No, but <laughs> You'd be doubling my salary. If you did. <laughs> no, but if I genuinely had ten thousand dollars, there's always a part of me that's wanted to buy a wine cellar. Oh, okay. And fill it up with some like really cool wines. Well, then you, you probably could too. Yeah. You get more than one cocktail. JP, what would you do with ten K? I didn't even say it. I know, but I, I want to say ten K. Yes. <laughs> you know you have to do this every time we I, say 10K. This will end on, um, oh, how about March 25th? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would I do with 10K? I'm oh, waiting for Johnny. Jeez, Johnny. Well, I'm, I'm getting tired of you guys saying <laughs> do that. Do we have to, like, point at you now? <laughs> we every... have a four-hour show. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'd, initially, I'm like, I got to save this. But I would blow it on something I really don't need, I'm sure. Wouldn't you spend some of it on your three kids? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. I'd probably... Oh, oh, wait. No, you were right the first time. I'd buy them, like, some crayons or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> From the dollar store, wait. so it's like 20 bucks. Okay. Oh, I, I took care of maybe, them. We're good. Make, make, you can probably get crayons make, uh, made out of actual gold, made out of actual silver, made out of actual platinum for 10K. What I should do is probably pay off my vehicle... 
I don't. Ooh. I wouldn't want to do that because yeah. then it's just gone. Mine is what I owe on my car is just a little under ten k, so I'd probably pay off. Yes, thank you. Probably pay off my car. That's a good idea. But oh. then it's all gone, like you said. I get oh. it. If you say ten k, you have no problem there. No, okay, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you, what you guys are looking at me. It's just a natural <laughs> reaction that the cow has, but maybe she can't hear you. Anyways, our cash cow is back. In April, which is, you know, April's a week from uh, today. today so. so get the K92.3 app because you're going to need it. Now, if you already got it, you're good to go. Punch in K923 in your app store or KOEL. Some people are saying they can't find it under that. So KOEL, and you'll have a chance to win $10,000 very, very soon. All right, we're going to talk about uh, lies we've told our kids, or if you don't have kids like myself or Carrie, then maybe a lie you've heard from your parents coming up on Marks of the Morning. It is stuff on that app as well. You can tap Listen Live. So if you are heading into work or heading out of work, if you're a third shifter, uh, obviously if you're heading out of work, you can listen to your car. But as soon as you get home, put us on on the K92.3 app. Check us out anywhere you go. All right. Every now and then, you will be asked a question by a child, a kid, and you are not in a position to answer it, whether it's uh, something about where do babies come from or whatever, you're going to leave them with a lie. And it's not always a situation where they ask you a question. Sometimes you just lie to your kids. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. I don't even have kids. I lie to my cats all the time. You lie to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> when they come in the office. I'm I sure you have. lie to them. <laughs> not, okay, maybe once or twice. Daddy's getting a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's going to be unemployed soon. I just want you to be nice to him. He likes to strike fear into your kids' hearts. <laughs> What is a lie you have told your kids? Now, if you're like me or Carrie and you don't have kids of your own, you can feel free to comment. By the way, this is on our Facebook page. Or you can tap the button on the app that says message, and uh, we'll get it right in the studio. If you don't have kids, then you can certainly tell us one that you, I don't want to say remember hearing, but you found out later was a lie from your parents. Uh, JP, you're the resident dad. i got to let you kick it off here. I've got a couple for you. This one is a big one. It's three words. McDonald's is closed. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I love you. I was going to really <laughs> judge you hard there. But McDonald's is closed. Well, there, well, that's kind of on the line of I love you is. Wh- <laughs> Wait, I, <laughs> McDonald's and I love you is the same thing? Well, the kids love McDonald's. Yeah. But I was going to say the kids always ask, which one of us do you like the best? Oh, you know, no, I, have, I have three. No. And we, do, my mom, did, mom and dad have three sons. So we would always ask our parents that. And they'd always be like, oh, we love you. All equally. And I'm sure every parent has one that they like. Each kid has their quirks. Oh, yeah. But I can't tell my kids which one I like better. And honestly, there's not one that I do. And that's just not the dad of me saying that. But you have to lie a little bit when oh, that one comes got out. You. Here's you, another one. Yeah. They stop making batteries for that toy. <laughs> oh. Especially the annoying ones. Ah, oh, sorry, kid. Uh, no more batteries for uh, that I'm one. I'm afraid that toy is never coming back. You shouldn't have played with it so much. It's oh, dead. Smart. Another one is, and I'm sure 99% of all parents can go with me on this one. When your kid makes something, draw something for you, but you already have a million different things of their art, oh, yeah. and you oh. throw it away or recycle it. You know, you can't keep them all. You just can't. No, I know. I know. But then you don't maybe get the garbage out in time, and the kid sees it in there, oh, sure. and then you have to come up with a great lie of why their precious drawing of a tree and a terrible-looking, unround sun is in the to- <laughs> in the trash. Usually it's like, oh, I don't know, it must have... Cat must have done it. Why don't you blame one of the other kids? Your sister Could do, do that. that. <laughs> oh, but you feel crazy. terrible because you see the look in their face like, you threw it away? I'm like, no, 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 I didn't. It's, uh, it's just I, resting. The, <laughs> the wind and... Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the trash fairy went AWOL. <laughs> then you're like, you want some ice cream? You immediately change the subject. You want those batteries that I told you to think <laughs> Hey, yeah, I you bought some. <laughs> hey, I bought some of those batteries. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my god! Oh, I never thought of that. My mom never threw any of my stuff away, I don't think, but I know my dad did. It's all. It's also important to tell your kids when they're young that they can be, when they grow up, they can be anything they want because it's good that they start hearing lies at a young age. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That happened to me. My parents thought I could See? be a, a really good singer, but oh, dang. I sound uh, like Babe the Pig. <laughs> There's but a you, market for that. Yeah, but you want to push your kids. Of course you want to tell them they can right. be anything they want when they right. grow up. You do. That's an important one. That's a big one. Uh, that would be one that I heard, too, a lot. You can be anything when you grow up. Oh, so I'll be sitting on my butt pushing buttons. All right, I like it. <laughs> Carrie Mack, what's one you remember hearing from your parents besides the singer one? 
Well, a lot of them had to do with like protecting me in a sense <laughs> from just being embarrassed. I always thought grilled cheeses were girl cheeses. Girl cheese? Girl cheese. So wow. I would tell people, oh, they're only allowed for girls. <laughs> oh, I get it. I thought I'm, it was made out of girls. I say, well, I'm a cannibal. Until I was around eight or nine years old and my parents didn't say anything. And they're like, yeah, you want a grilled cheese right now, honey? And I was like, yeah, mom, thanks. I you was... ever see a boy eat it and just lose your mind? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. I'm not going to lie. What like, is he doing? What is Bobby doing with the girl cheese? <laughs> girl cheese. Uh, that's, that's interesting, funny. yeah. That's uh, just like a misunderstanding that they just let perpetrate throughout your childhood. But that was a lie that they said to protect me yeah. from being embarrassed. The boys eating grilled, grilled cheeses. One of my favorites that still, and I've brought this up to my mom, is about... Uh, 12 or, or 13. I wasn't very young, but about 12 or 13, when you're still young enough to not necessarily know the way things in your body work, I remember feeling oh. very Whoa. short. Oh. No, it's not. I'm not going there. <laughs> but I remember I, I was no longer. I, I used to be very tall in elementary school. I grew very quick, but it stopped. And I remember asking my mom and saying, you know, like, ah, in middle school, you get out of elementary school. I so, so many boys that are taller than me, even some girls. And she said, oh, you're st- you'll still grow. You, you grow till you're about 18 or 19, she said, which I don't know to this day. Maybe some people do. I sure didn't. I was done growing by middle school, I think, but 5'9", where I am now. Never grew again. Oh, no. You're yeah. supposed to be uh, – guys are supposed to stop growing when they're like 25. Oh, well – Maybe she was onto something, but it certainly didn't work for me. Oh, uh, no. He was like, he, she was like, you'll get there someday, bud. Well, I grew, but it was in the belly. That was the problem. Perhaps uh, perhaps out. you hit too many girled cheese and that stunted <laughs> your growth. Yeah, thanks, ladies. That's why I'm still at 5'5 five, five right now. <laughs> All those girled cheeses. You could have been on, on Amazon. You could have been six foot. I could have been like Gal Gadot. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a lie. You have told your kids like uh, what JP said, or if you are like Harry and I, you don't have kids of your own. Reminisce and tell us about a lie that you heard when you... More, it's why we drink. Hey, if you are uh, looking for a little more Justin Moore in your life, a little more Justin Moore, you can check out our interview with him from a couple weeks back. He explains the meaning behind why we drink and how his mom inspired the song. And That's kind of what we're talking about today. Not so much drinking, but uh, lies that you may have heard from your parents if you don't have any kids of your own, or certainly if you are a parent, Lies you've told your kids. Time to come clean. JP just did a little bit ago. Carrie, we got a message you said? Yeah, we do from Haley. We were getting my daughter a bucket calf, and we thought we had it, but they gave it to someone else after we told her she was getting one. Oh, no. So we told her the cow was sick, and we couldn't have a sick oh, cow no. in the barn. Oh, that's, that's good. That's legit. That's well done. I mean, yeah. as a child, you understand illness, so you don't want the other ones to get ill. Exactly. And then she said a month later, we found another one, and everything was better. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, my wife reminded me of one that she used to hear as a kid. She lives in a very, grew up in a very rural area, part of Iowa, northeast Iowa. And she said, my mom always told me that trick-or-treating was only for town kids. And I remember her telling me the story that, like, Decora would have been the nearest big town. You were you grew up in Wacom. Mm-hmm. Did there Was there trick-or-treating in Wacom? There was, but uh, in the same scenario as your wife, we grew up between Wacom and Decora. So we were out on the farm oh, as yeah. well. But... We were never told that we couldn't trick or treat no. <laughs> because we lived in the country. Right, right. Well, she was. <laughs> That's so sad. I th- my heart. I think if my memory's right, Hannah said the first time she went trick or treating was at like thirteen. Oh no! That's, no. That's usually when kids stop. <laughs> yeah, I know. And your wife's yeah. your wife saw it as oh, a middle this is, schooler. This is awesome. Why didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> She's walking around with the four year olds. Like, can I have an extra bar? I haven't gotten <laughs> trick or treating in thirteen years. Rhonda says on our Facebook page, I may have learned this one from a fellow parent, but we told our kids that Chuck E. Cheese is only open on birthdays. Oh, that's and good. we get invited to go. That's funny. So in other words, you only go if it's your birthday or another kid's birthday. This one's funny. Abby on Facebook says, when I was little, my grandma used to tell me that if we ate the crust on our bread, we would get curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> I never ate the crust on my bread and my sister uh, always ate hers. I have curly hair now and she has stick pin straight hair. Uh, you know what, though? You Try some stuffed crust pizza. That undoes it, right? Uh, that's like uh, eating the crust and cheese. Uh, we got time for one more. We got to move on. We've got Gender Bender, but you can keep chiming in on Facebook. Uh, Judy, hello. Uh, are you there, Judy? Hi. On those lies that you tell your kids? Yeah. Do you have one for us? Well, when my children were young and uh, they thought there was no Santa Claus anymore, 
I said, well, yes, there is. I said, do you really think your dad would buy all these things? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Thanks, Judy. Appreciate it. All right. We got to get moving here because we got gender bender in five, but we got news and weather next. Peter Valley, we got uh, we got so many messages on the lies you told your parents uh, or vice versa, I should say, lies the uh, kids hear from their parents. Mm, we, I'll read one more and then we're going to get to gender bender. This one came in on our app. Holly Joe says, when I was younger and was mad at my dad or mom, I'd pout my lip out. You know, when you pout, your lip would go out. She always said, her mom, don't do that or a bird will poop on it. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that could happen. I mean, is, theoretically. Possible, yeah. yeah, That's so smart. She says, needless to say, I didn't do it a lot. And she says, I use it with my daycare also. <laughs> I also see little kids in my daycare suck on their hair, mostly the girls. Oh. And I tell them that if you tell them don't do that or eventually worms will start growing in your mouth. That's funny. Write a book about child rearing. This yeah. woman has it all together. She's got it all figured out. All right, let's get two gender men. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play Gender Bender. On Marks in the Morning. Hold on while I get a drink of hot tea because I just blew out my vocal cord. Hey, Johnny, how's yeah. this game work? It's pretty simple, Dave. You don't even have to blow out your vocal cords to play. You just call us up at 833-4985. If you're the first male or female caller who hasn't won with us in a month, you can play for two crispy chicken sandwiches from McDonald's and a chance to win a year's supply of them. These are permanent menu item, not a temporary one. We're not trying to pull the rug over your eyes here. It is um, 52, so 52 free crispy chicken sandwiches if you win the grand prize. But today you're playing for two. Check them out in, in any area McDonald's. And our thanks to the Soifer family McDonald's for these coupon cards. All right, 833-4985. Call now to play. He's ready. Are you ready? It's time to play Gender Bender on Marks in the Morning. Hey, Johnny Marks, who are our contestants today? Fighting it out this morning on Marks in the Morning's Gender Bender. It's Robin from Colesburg. Robin, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Good, glad to hear that. Your opponent is Paul. Paul is calling in from Waterloo. Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm glad to have you both on the phone. It's uh, not very sunny this morning, but you're both rays of sunshine. And you're playing for a free crispy chicken sandwich, two of them, from McDonald's with a chance to win a year's supply. It's 27 to 25 so far in 2021. It's the gals beating the guys. And a gal got in first this morning. So, Robin, you decide who's going first, you or Paul? I'll let Paul go first. All right. Before we get started, you'll each get three questions. Paul first. They'll be aimed at the opposite gender. A better score is needed to secure a victory. And yes, we have a tiebreaker if we need it. Paul, your questions are coming from Carrie Mack. Good luck. Okay, Paul. According to the old saying, what flies when you're having fun? Time. Yes. Yeah. But of course, that's T-H-Y-M-E, the spice, right? People just throw it up in the sky. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Okay. Uh, what was the name of the Scooby-Doo character that played the nerdy girl with glasses? Nerdy? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good guess. That's a good guess. It's Velma. Velma. Velma from Scooby-Doo. I always get her and Daphne confused. Really? Yeah. I can never remember which one's which. Oh. Is Daphne the one with the socks that go way up? Or no. Daphne's the blonde. No, Daphne's the redhead. Oh, who's the blonde? Fred. Fred. Oh, Fred. Jeez Louise. <laughs> right, see, there you wow. go. <laughs> I, was, I, was <laughs> I was even in the wrong gender. <laughs> I'm afraid I, the JP has lost a point. <laughs> I was right, always left. told that I looked like Velma as a kid. There you go. I think that's a compliment. I still don't know what she looks like. I'll Google that while you give them number three. Okay, this is your final question. What do you call the green-colored Japanese condiment that has the distinctive taste of horseradish? Wasabi. Yeah. Very good. Nice job. Wasabi is correct. So it's two out of three for Paul. And Robin, you have to beat that to win or at least match it to force a tiebreaker. Good luck. All right, Robin, finish this scene. Don't pick up any wooden. Don't pick up. What was that? Soldiers. Soldiers. Don't pick up any wooden soldiers. No. The answer would be nickels. Don't Don't pick pick up up any wooden nickels. I have no idea what that means. Hmm. I have no idea where you'd spend a wooden nickel. (laughs) That's why you don't pick them up. Yeah. All right. They're worthless. What famous mascot is known for saying? Only you can prevent forest fires. 
Smokey the Bear. Yes, there's actually no the in it. It's just Smokey Bear. Everyone thinks it's Smokey the Bear, but it's Smokey Bear. Really? I didn't yeah. know that either. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I mean, he is a bear. I don't know why he, we're not JP the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. It might be on your business card, but it's inaccurate. All right, Robin, get this, and we'll go for a tiebreaker. In baseball, what do you call the fence behind home plate? Oh, yeah, but I don't know. The dugout would be on the sides of the field. This would be the backstop. Ah, the All backstop. Right. Yeah, that's oh, that's- another one of those quirky baseball terms, but it does come up a lot, usually at least once per game. The way the Twins have been pitching lately. <laughs> that's right. uh, Robin, nice job. It's all about Paul today, and uh, you're welcome to call us back and try again tomorrow, okay? Sounds good. Congrats, Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robin. Have a wonderful day. Paul, yes, indeed. Congratulations. Hey, what are you up to this morning? Well, I'm on the way, way to have coffee with my mother, who's in her 80s, and my daughter, who flew home from Arizona to visit for a few days. Hey, that's, inc- that's awesome. And uh, you've got to go on the mighty K92.3. Here's some exciting news for you. The Iowa State Fair has just announced the final grandstand act, and it is... Are you ready? Are you ready for this? It's co- it's country. It's two country stars. It is Cole Swindell and Dustin Lynch. Cole Swindell and Dustin Lynch will be at the Iowa State Fair in 2021, which is going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait for this. Getting the info uh, ready to go up on the K92.3 app. We'll get all of the acts this year. Uh, but uh, 139 days, 15 hours, 54 minutes till the start of the Iowa State Fair. It looks like, unlike in 2020, We'll actually have a state fair this year, so that's incredibly exciting. And what a great way to round it out. Blake Shelton will be there. Sam Hunt will be there. Now we know Cole Swindell and Dustin Lynch will be there. By the way, I didn't say it, but it's Monday, August 16th. That's the day. And uh, Chris Stapleton will be one of the performers. Oh, but wait, there's more. (laughs) Uh, ACM host Keith Urban. Oh. And Russell Dickerson's with him. Uh, We'll be there as well. So what a year. What a stacked year. Kip Moore, by the way, is with uh, Sam Hunt. And uh, Matt Stell will be with Blake Shelton. There are other big name acts, too, in in the non-country world, if you're a fan. This, I don't know what this is. Five Finger Death Punch. Sounds violent. They'll be there. I've heard of them. They're a metal band, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, The Doobie Brothers will be there. Sticks with special guest Tesla. Okay. And then the Beach Boys with special guest Hanson. What? Oh, Have you ever they, seen Hanson live? They're so good, actually. No, I like Hanson, but I just feel like if they all went out to dinner, they would uh, the waitress would assume that Hanson brought their grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably getting some mbop. Yeah, <laughs> that's a quite the eclectic group at Isn't the Iowa it? State Fair this I year. I love that. I'm going to this. I want to go. You know, it, the you Iowa State to, Fair yeah, time. you've never been to the Iowa State yeah. Fair. I've obviously, never been. I haven't been there since before I started here. When I was younger, my first stint in Iowa. Uh, and you're a big political fan. Go on an election year. Well, every year is technically an election year. Go on a presidential election year. I know we've got a ways to go, but uh, it's a hoot because I was the first in the country. So the year before the February uh, caucus, we'll, you'll get the Iowa State Fair candidates. All right. We're going to play a game. We're going to talk about uh, something food related. We learned JP really enjoys eating something. Uh, it has to do with a loaf of bread that he enjoys. Carrie finds it disgusting. My wife likes it. Actually, she said she loves this part of the bread. So we'll get into that coming up on the show as well. We're going to play a game where I will give you the name of a country star, except I'm going to give you his or her real name, and you need to figure out who they are. That's right. Not every star uses their real name on stage. It's in the morning here on K92.3. We are the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. i got to ask these two, what would you do with $10,000? Of course, I'm asking them for a reason. But before I get to that, let me tell you what I would do with 10 k I would pay off my car loan. I realized uh, a couple weeks ago, I'm, around the first of the month, I make a payment. So I guess it would have been more than a couple weeks ago. But beginning of March, I get an update, and they said you're like sixty uh, percent of the way through your loan. I owe about ten k still on my car, and uh, I'm thinking about trading it in. But boy, if I win ten thousand, just pay it off and start a new loan. <laughs> I mean, it's the American way. Right? It's it's <laughs> it's not just the fact that you'd pay it off. It's just when the first of the month rolls around, just so much less anxiety because you know you don't have to worry about yeah, forking right. over that money that you don't want to. It's just done. It's wiped away. I had, there was one time, one month that I missed and I got a, your car could be repossessed. <laughs> it was like they were trying to scare the heck out of me 
It was like, okay, didn't even hit my credit rating, but I haven't forgotten since. So I guess but, it worked. But still, though, if you go years and years and years without missing one payment, don't, yeah. doesn't it kind of make upset you that they're coming hard after you oh, like yeah. that? I'm like, I was yeah. two days late. I've never been late. I bet they've gone softer during the pandemic, but this was a couple of years ago. All right, so that's what I would do with 10K. Carry Mack, you win $10,000. No questions asked. Here's your check. What do you do? I feel like I have to be responsible like you and maybe pay off my yeah. student loans because, dang. I'm older than you. I, I should be boring. You should be out there cavorting around and having fun. Well, I can't cavort or have fun in the middle of a pandemic It'll and with over. a bunch of money uh, that I have to pay to the university that I went oh, okay. to. You should get it all in pennies like that one guy from JP's Weird News Rodeo story yeah. a couple weeks ago and just leave it on the doorstep of Syracuse Hughes University. <laughs> with some oil grease on it. I can <laughs> right, do that. Right. It's either pay off my student loans or buy a boat. Okay, there's one or one. They're if, very if, closely related. If you're going to buy a boat, then you would have to get a new vehicle so you could haul said uh, boat. No, yeah, I would just ask you guys to do it. <laughs> My car is front wheel drive and barely can go up a hill. A four cylinder, a little. Anyway, JP? Uh, and JP? <laughs> if I won 10K, I would buy 5,000 Powerball tickets. <laughs> what? <laughs> In hopes of increasing my winnings. For those who aren't gamblers, those cost $2 a piece, hence you'd be out mm -hmm. of cash. And if but you, you'd win something, but I don't think you'd win the jackpot. Just think, if you get the Powerball correct, just that Powerball, you win four bucks. So think how many four dollar winnings I would have, plus yeah. the, plus the think chance to win a lot more money. Here's a question for you: If you actually randomized, because I don't think you'd sit there and fill out five thousand oh, slips, what happens if you get two that are exact? Like you could theoretically get two of the exact same numbers, like ticket all the numbers the same. I'd have to split the jackpot with myself. Yeah, but what if that ticket doesn't win anything? Yeah, I'm sure that would happen. I, yeah. I Honestly, I would not spend. I know. I'd probably buy a few, but I'm not going to blow it all on lottery tickets. Well, we're talking about $10,000, not just as a hypothetical, because on K92.3, our cash cow is coming back very early April, and we're very late March right now. So that should tell you to go get that K92.3 app. Get it from your app store. It's totally free. And there aren't too many free apps that could get you ten thousand dollars. There's other cash prizes as well, but ten K, the grand prize, K nine two point three in your app store or K O E L if you're having trouble finding it. All right, let's play a game here. This is uh it's kind of fun. It's a the country real names game. The real names game is simple. I give you the real name of a country star. Uh-huh. And you tell me who he or she is. I'll give you multiple choice. Feel free to play along with us here in the studio. Let's start with a legend. A legend. That's your clue. Are you ready? Virginia Patterson Hensley. H-E-N-S-L-E-Y. None of those three parts of the name are in the stage name. Is Virginia Shania Twain, Patsy Cline, or Faith Hill? I'm going Patsy. I'm going Faith. I have faith in her. Oh, JP was right. I... I tried to give you a clue with legend. I'm not saying that Faith Hill's not on her way to being a legend, but Patsy Klein is a bona fide legend. All right, let's try this one. Troyal Brooks. Oh. Troyal Brooks. Is it Garth Brooks or Kix Brooks? Oh, I think it's Garth. It Obviously. is Garth. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is Garth. We were right. talking about this a few weeks ago, I recall. I actually remembered something. Wow. Well, both the Brookses, Kix Brooks and Garth Brooks, know they're not related. Use stage names. Obviously, Kix is not his real name. It's Leon. He won't come up in this because that's too easy. Leon Brooks is Kix Brooks' real first name. Um, Hiram King. Hiram, H-I-R-A-M King. Would that be the real name of Blake Shelton, Jason Aldean, or Hank Williams? Hiram King. Hank Williams. Yeah, I'm yeah. going with Hank. The legendary Hank Williams was born Hiram Kings or King Williams. This I dropped the Williams. Hank the first, the dad. Yeah. This is not Hank Jr. Okay. Hank, no, Hank Jr. Uh, I don't have his name so, pulled up, but so, I assume it'd be similar. Well, yeah, so technically Hank Jr. is not a junior if his dad's real name is Hiram. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. Wow. That's deep, isn't it? That is. <laughs> deep very thoughts. deep. So deep. All right. Give me one second here. Uh, okay. The next one on my list is Audrey Perry. A female here. Audrey Perry. Is that... Kimberly Perry from the band Perry, Shania Twain, or Faith Hill? I think that's Shania Audrey Twain. Perry. Yeah, I'm going to say Shania. We're, we're a lot of same on these. Yeah. 
Faith no. Hill. Oh. oh. Faith Hill. I, I See, Audrey that's what Faith. I would assume. That's her real name. I did drop the Faith, which is her actual middle name, because okay. oh. it'd be too easy. By the way, Perry, Kimberly Perry, is the band Perry's, Kimberly Perry's real name, but I thought I'd throw her in there. All right, we got, uh, what do we got time for here? We'll do maybe one or two more. Colden Rainey, R-A-N-E-Y. Colden, C-O-L-D-E-N, Rainey. Is that Dirk Bentley, Cole Swindell, or Jason L. Dean? Cole Swindell, but also his name is Cold and Rainey? Colden. Right. Colden, but yes. Colden See, Rainey. he should have kept that name. That's a great name. Yeah. Colden Rainey. Yeah, that just sounds like a, it sounds like an old Wild West name, like Young Guns movie era. I like it. I yeah. like it. Or a weatherman. All right, let me give you yeah. one. <laughs> it does kind of sound like a weatherman. Sean Randolph. Sean Randolph. Kind of a boring name. That's probably why Sean changed his name. What did he change it to? Randy Hauser? Kid Rock? Or, Kid Rock. <laughs> <laughs> or Conway Twitty? Conway Twitty. Uh, what was the first one? Uh, Randy Hauser. Yeah, we'll go Randy. Just be different. I'm sticking with Randy. I'm sticking with JP too. Yeah. What? You changed because of me? No. I that's think she what... just laughed because I said. <laughs> no, it's uh, Randy Hauser is correct. Sean Randolph yeah. Hauser. Right on. Is his real name? By the way, Robert James Ritchie is Kid Rock's real name. I think I threw him in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, we'll do one more. There's so many of these. <laughs> Gary Wayne Vernon Jr. Whoa. Whoa. Is that Conway Twitty's real name? Randy Travis's real name? Or Rascal Flatts Gary Lavox's real name? Uh, I've heard this before. I want to say Randy Travis. Me too. Dang it. Well, there's probably a reason why you wanted to, but didn't say it, right? It's Gary Lavox. Gary Wayne Vernon is, in fact, Gary Lavox is his stage name. What did I say? Conway Twitty was one of your options? Yeah. Harold Lloyd Jenkins is Conway Twitty. Conway Twitty's such a classic country name, and he's a classic country singer, but not in, in any way is his real name and his stage name connected. It's one of those things where I'm always curious how they came up with the stage name, like especially with Conway Twitty. Why Twitty? Why would he choose Twitty? I don't it know. It just seems I, such an it, odd word. He liked Looney Tunes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, Randall Hank Williams is Hank Williams Jr.'s real name. I okay. know that came up earlier. Randall. Dirks Bentley is, uh, I threw him in here a lot as an option. His real name is Dirks, but it's not his first name. It's Frederick Dirks Bentley. And who else did I throw in here a whole bunch? Jason Aldean? He's Jason Aldean. But Williams is his actual birth last name. Jason L. Deeds is first and middle name. There you go. And I've got, I don't picture this as the source of an argument, but it kind of became one this morning in the studio. It's Mark's in the morning. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you not even care? All three of us, between the three of us, all three of those stances were taken. What am I talking about? I'm talking about those end pieces on a loaf of bread, uh, the heel, the head, whatever you want to call them. Do you eat them? We're going to talk about this in just a few minutes. We're going to come back with the news, weather, and your Throwback Thursday Throwdown winner. That's right at 8.30. And then um, we'll find out what you think. Carrie doesn't like it. JP loves it. I don't really care. My wife loves them. But you can chime in now on Facebook if you've uh, got to scoot away from your radio. I understand, although you can take us with you on the app. But uh, if you absolutely can't, go chime in now on our Facebook page. We'll get into this coming up on the show. I'm Mary Morris. Oh, JP, we're getting everything from... JP, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> to, it's the best. What are we talking about? It's Mark's in the morning. It's K92.3. Well, we're talking about something that uh, was posted on Facebook and we teased a little earlier in the show. Carrie doesn't like it. I don't care. <laughs> Apparently, I'm indifferent. And JP <laughs> loves it. We're talking about either the heel, the butt, whatever you call it, the end parts of bread, a loaf of bread. JP came in today with end pieces sandwich, an end pieces sandwich. It was peanut butter and honey sandwich. And I even told you guys right away. It smelled great, by the way. I, it did. I, I only great. did this because that's all I had left in the in my loaf of bread. I had the two, I, I call them the butts. I had the butts of yeah. the bread left and that's all I had. So I still made a sandwich out of it. And was it good? It was. I couldn't taste it. It just looks different. Did you toast it by any chance? No, I didn't toast it. Yeah. My wife, I asked her because th- we talked about this off the air, very early in the show, and JP had a sandwich. And she said, my wife said that uh, she loves it. It's got good texture. It just doesn't work for grilled cheese. That's what she said. 
I have to disagree with your wife because the only time I will use it is if there's no other bread and I'm making a grilled cheese. See, that's what I did. That's all I had left. You guys looked at me like I was a castaway. I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I have a problem with it. It offended me and my heritage. No, but uh, I just hate how you put the... Heritage? <laughs> I no, thought but... I thought it was a doorstop at first and I was quite <laughs> but it might just be me. It still tastes the same. It might look different. No, it doesn't it's... taste the same because it's all just... It's like 60% cross. From the woman who says red Skittles taste different or red M&M's taste different than <laughs> the others. That's candy. That's besides the point. <laughs> I'm committed to this. Why didn't you turn it inside out so you get like the bread part see, on the outside so no one sees it? They do that at restaurants. See, but I put honey on it. There's... The uh, the butt ends of the bread is it's a smoother texture. Yeah. The honey would just would have drizzled all over myself. The butt's smoother. I got you. I got yes, you. It is. It's much <laughs> smooth. Smooth like a baby's butt. <laughs> smooth so, like baby's butt. So JP enjoys this part of the bread. I don't enjoy it. That's all I had left. <laughs> but you'll eat it. I, I ate it. Yeah, it tastes the same. When I, I was a kid, I, I don't eat a lot of bread these days. But when I was a kid, my mom would buy you know Wonder Bread or some of that. Uh, she would. The first thing she'd do is take that out and throw it away. I do remember that. We'd pitch it. See, and I've heard that too, but I always keep the butts in there to try to keep the bread so it doesn't stale, get, get so it doesn't uh, dry out as quick, because I think it kind of keeps it together a little yeah. bit more. That's yeah. a very no, good I get point. You. That's, that's smart. Definitely my mom's not the one to go to for food <laughs> advice. I use the butts of uh, or the heels, with what we call them back in Pennsylvania. I use them when I'm baking, so I put them with all the cookies that are done so they don't go stale. That's supposed to keep the that, moisture You're right. Them. Yep. I should do that more often. I hadn't even thought of that. that I mean, yeah. I always eat the cookies right away anyway, so there's no chance <laughs> Those of going Those cookies aren't going bad in my house. <laughs> you mistake the crusty part for cookies or whatever? Facebook is pretty, pretty. Uh, I don't want to say split. They're, they've actually pretty much come down on the side of JP. Good toasted with peanut butter, says Joyce. Uh, some people are just telling us what they call it. Heels, butts, crust. But overall, other than, let's see, Megan says there's something wrong with you. Well, uh, we all know that. <laughs> That's besides this point. Other than that, most people seem to be complimentary. Carrie, a different Carrie, obviously, says she calls it the heel and toasts it with peanut butter. So the way you had it, minus the toasting, because you said you didn't toast it, seems to be a popular way to have the butt of the bread. Now, I've never heard the term heel before until this morning. Johnny, have you, really? Okay. Yeah. See, I've never heard heel of the loaf of bread. Because it's the end, so it's like the heel of the... Well, clearly the bread's either sitting or standing, yeah. according to this analogy. It's, uh... And they're as crusty as your foot heel sometimes. <laughs> oh. Well, continue to chime in on Facebook. We'll move on on the air, but a lot of people probably don't even give it thought when they buy a loaf of bread. Maybe they, like I, my mom used to do, just pitch it, or maybe you just save it till the end. Or maybe you go feed it to the birds. I don't know. Teach their own. We'll be back in a couple minutes here. We'll get to a Throwback Thursday Throwdown winner number two. I don't get to say that every week. It's Toby Keith. How do you like me now? Music from Parmalee on the way. And Nashville News in the morning on K92.3, the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. How appropriate is that? Uh, looking for something fun to do? Check out the K92.3 app as we inch closer to the weekend. We always try to give you ideas and such. But I want to jump ahead to next week, not weekend, because these three folks, I'm Lumping myself in there, I guess, in the third person, are going to be in Charles City, the first stop on our 10 town tour all spring. And I, I'm assuming through summer, we'll be going through different towns around the K country outside of the Cedar Valley. And Chucktown is our first stop. Charles City will be up there on Wednesday. We'll be there uh, at the Rustic Corner in Charles City. I believe that's on Main Street. Carrie Mack and myself broadcasting live. We're going to get kick things kicked off, I think, about 11. Give us a little time after the show to skedaddle, get up to Charles City. Uh, this uh, broadcast sponsored by Via Field, and you know what they're celebrating up there? It's Chick Fest, which is actually the following weekend, Easter weekend. But Chick Fest, which <clears throat> I don't want to brag, but that was uh, uh -huh. that was that was my dorm room in uh -huh. college. Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't live in a dorm. I, I knew right away where that was going. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't live in the dorms. Okay, fine. <laughs> You got me. And it was all for the chicken wings, it not was. even for the chicks. Yeah. I lived close to a Buffalo Wild Wings. It was Chick Fest every day. <laughs> uh, but Chick Fest is, um, is coming up uh, that following weekend and uh, sort of a double end tundra there. We'll talk a lot more about it when we get to Charles City, our 10 town tour, our first stop. Coming up this Wednesday, sponsored by Via Field. So thanks to our friends at Via Field. We will uh, we'll be there. It'll be Carrie's first time in Charles City. 
Uh, have you been? When was the last time you were up there, JP? Ooh, it's been a while. Charles City, growing up, walk on. Charles City was in the Northeast Iowa Conference, so growing up sports wise, we were in Charles City quite a bit. I always thought Charles City before I, I moved back to this area was beautiful. I mean, I still do. But with the river there, they mm-hmm. make very good use of the river. You get very close. You can interact uh, kind of over in that. I don't know the street name, but it's over by the High V. <laughs> I use stores and restaurants as my landmarks for everything. Uh, it's just a lovely area this time of year, I'm sure, uh, as the snow is now gone and ice obviously now gone. Probably a good time on a nice day to get out to that area. Uh, the Rustic Corner is in a really cool part of town. What is it? Pub on the Cedar, the restaurant is right yeah, over there. Yeah. They have St. Charles Brewing. Last time I was there was uh, late last summer for uh, our, our our new fireplace was installed by a company that's up there. So we were up in Charles City, wanted to stick around and go to St. Charles Brewing. But but the wife said, you got beer at home. So now we're not married. <laughs> <laughs> this is your second wife. That's where you drew the line. That was it right there. Said, actually, I just pouted and stopped, but she was driving. <laughs> so we came home. Uh, anyways, look for more information on our K92.3 app. It's uh, the very first story up there. So we're looking forward to hitting Charles City coming up next week, less than a week away. And uh, the very last day of March. Hey, JP, do you want to give us a sneak peek of your Weird News Rodeo story? Oh, it's coming up in about five minutes. It in- <laughs> involves a high school, a mother, and her daughter. That's in a boxing glove. Boxing this is, glove. Oh, oh, okay. okay. This, yeah. uh, that echoes the one where the mom cheated for the daughter to win the, um, the what was it, Beauty Queen or no? Uh, uh, homecoming homecoming queen. queen, yeah. So it's along those lines, but it has nothing to do with winning a contest. We've learned a lot of weird news stories have come out of high schools between with moms and daughters. So. In Florida. In Florida. <laughs> so we'll get to it's Weird News Rodeo, a roundup of weird news stories. Of course, JP handles the rounding up of the weird news stories, corrals them, and then picks the number one each day to highlight. And you've been on a roll lately, some very memorable well, stories. Yesterday, I should say, because you aren't here, I did the one about the shrimp tails and the cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, yeah. How nasty is that? We don't have a follow-up quite yet. I guess it's going in for a DNA test. Uh, but, but to Topanga from Boy Meets World's husband yeah. is the one that found him. So, you know, that's an ongoing saga. We'll report back when we have more. It's on the uh, K92.3 app, the original story. But anyways, it's your floor. What do you got for right. today? <laughs> okay. Thanks, Howard. Yeah. Uh, Mama was at a high school with her daughter as the two had to meet with the school's principal. I'm not sure why they had this meeting, but I think you'll figure out what was going on. Uh-oh. After the meeting with the principal, the daughter walked through the cafeteria and immediately started fighting with another girl. This is, are we watching Cobra Kai here? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> the daughter pushed the girl to the ground, threw some punches before mom jumped in, and then started punching the girl as well. Oh my God. And the mom was wearing a boxing glove on her left hand. She's Louise. She came prepared. Even stranger, the police report says that this mother was wearing the boxing glove on her hand when she arrived at the school to meet with the principal. She told the school that it was super glued to her wrist and she could not remove it. And the school was okay with this. They're like, oh, all right, I guess that happens. That, yeah, okay. Yeah, so natural. they had the meeting and then the mom started pummeling this high school kid. God, Just one glove, not two. So the girl who was beat up had a few lacerations on her body. Her parents are planning to press charges against the girl and her mom. I would go after the school for allowing the... I, you're not supposed to just let a, anybody who's not a member, like, who's not a part of the faculty just wander through the school, period. With a glove on her hand. A yeah. bo- not just, like, a because it's cold. She's wearing a boxing glove. Oh, my God. She came prepared. This the, is premeditated. Yes. And you can definitely, I've watched enough reality and, and legal TV that you can definitely go after them. And I'm thinking when I first read this, how the mo- after her daughter's beating up this girl, it says the mom jumps in. I'm like, oh, the mom's going to break it up. No, the mom shows the daughter's side so she can get her licks in on this yeah. girl. Oh, my God. I tell you, this one kind of writes itself. It's got its own punchline. <laughs> <laughs> the mom was arrested and charged with one count of child abuse and with use of a special weapon. Oh, so like you said, yeah. she came into sc- It's a boxing glove. To protect her own fist. Yeah, from punching the girl. Yes, so that's a specialized I, weapon. I never thought of that. She was attacking a minor, too. Mm, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a very, very quick story, and then we'll move on here. But my dad was a teacher for many, 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 many years. He retired 30-plus uh, years. There was an incident. He taught special ed, so he happened to just witness this. But he was in a hallway when two kids not in the special ed program started fighting. So as all teachers did, he safely jumped in, separated, and had to go to the principal's office with them. Because he was a witness. 
The parents were called in. Both ma, uh, both dads came in, one from each student, and they started fist fighting in the principal's office. The, the fathers did? The parents, oh and the police ended up having to be called. Both ended up in a squad car. Wow. And my dad went back to class. But he said that the two dads came in, heard the story, and started beating each other up right in front <laughs> oh of the principal. Gosh. Well, I guess I know where the kids get it from. <laughs> well, Exactly. <laughs> So, wow. interesting. All right, we'll be back in a couple minutes on Marks in the Morning. Here, I'll say it. My my own father taught me this. Never trust a person who wears a boxing glove. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually up to no good. You don't see people just wearing those because they look cool. They're not... Uh, they're not, what are those, North Face jackets? Yeah, or yeah. Car, whatever. <laughs> they're not Carhartt. That's the one I was looking for. We'll be back in a minute here with news and weather. Thomas Ratz, 92.3. About 2.5 million Americans getting vaccinated every day from COVID-19 here in Iowa, April 5th, which is a Monday, is the day that uh, everybody becomes eligible to get their vaccine. My dad gets his second one today. My mom is done. JP, how far are your parents? Yours are done, right, Carrie? I think my mom is done. And my, yeah, both of them are. They're my, both done. My parents got their first dose the day before we did. So they'll have their second one right around right the time after, we get right ours. After. Yeah. Um, so if you're wondering, if you want more information, if you're wondering county by county until April 5th, when it's just open to the general public, who's eligible? How do I get it? How do I sign up? Go to the K92.3 app. Uh, right there on the home screen, you've got a COVID-19 news button. You might have to scroll over a couple buttons there, but it's there. Uh, you tap that, and uh, not only do we have vaccine information, but we've got all the COVID updates. And I'm happy to say there have been a lot fewer lately. So that's good. All right, before we go, uh, we're uh, going to be getting, getting along here pretty soon because we've got 30 minutes of nonstop country to get to in Nashville News. I want to remind you it's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. We'll do our Genius Awards after 7 o'clock. If you've got a Genius Award you want to either nominate yourself for or somebody else, you don't have to wait. You can tap the message button on the app or the be on the radio button. One is for texting us, and the other one is for actually recording a message that we can play back. So we'll get to that after 7. Gender Bender at 7.35. And much more throughout the day. Uh, oh, it's Dad Jokes 101 tomorrow. It's oh, Friday. you guys better bring your A game. Well, we'll get some St. Patrick's Day jokes, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, hey. It's because I... we've been doing this long enough now, so I'm expecting the best of the best. It's, I, I'm going to try to be as straight face tomorrow as I can. So if it's not a great zinger, I am not even going to show any emotion. Did I tell you about Condon, how he celebrated his birthday <laughs> a couple Stop. weeks ago? It's not I'll, funny. I'll still laugh at that one. It's oh, not good. funny. You could do that one every week you and want, I would still you giggle. You want me to do that one every week? Because I will. It's uh, not funny. <laughs> it's not oh, funny, and then you snort. It, it is funny. Your butt off. It is pretty good. All right, but before we get on to anything else, a couple of celebrity birthdays. Uh, you got American Idol runner-up, country star Catherine McPhee. Uh, she's 37 today. Catherine McPhee is 37. Is she still relevant? No. <laughs> not I mean, she really. She has that TV show coming up on yeah. Netflix. Country Comfort. She's going to be on. Yeah. The uh, Big Sean, uh, he made the news... He's a, I think he's a singer. He's he, a rapper. Is he, he a rapper? Yeah. But, he, but he dated Naya Rivera, who passed away in yeah. that terrible lake accident in, uh, oh, last year, I believe. He's 33 today. Aretha Franklin, obviously no longer with us, unfortunately. He passed away in 18, but she was born on this day in 1942. So show her some R-E-S-P-E-C-T and wish her a happy B-I-R-T-H-D-A-Y. Wow, good spelling. Thank I you. thought for sure you'd screw that so one So did I. Didn't rhyme, but I had to get it all out. Uh, and Elton John is 74 today. My favorite witch, Sarah Jessica Parker, is 56 <laughs> today. Okay. Oh, I love her. From Hocus Pocus. No, I know. I just, you said witch. And my, <laughs> my brain translated that. He I've thought heard... you were talking about me. No. He thought you were talking about me. I've heard she's a very hard person to deal with. You told me that, Carrie. You said that she is kind I of I said witch. that off the air. Yeah. I hope you wouldn't say it. Is she, is, Why? she doesn't listen. Is Sarah Jessica Parker still married to Matthew Broderick? Yeah. They've he, been married. They're is, one of the few Hollywood couples that have made it. They have endured. Yeah. I believe they're still married. Well, let's Google this. Well, you, while you're Googling that, Sarah Jessica Parker is how old today? 56, I think. 56. She yeah. looks good for her age. I will say that. But I've always had a slight crush on her. I did, too, back in the... Um, Sex in the City? No. What was the movie? Hocus Pocus. Yeah. I thought she was great back then. I was very young, and she was way out of my league. <laughs> and still is. And still is. <laughs> An auto racing superstar and ex of uh, Aaron Rodgers, Danica Patrick, is 39 today. So Matthew Broderick and Sarah Jessica Parker are still married, but guess who Sarah Jessica Parker dated before him? Um, I have no idea. Harrison Ford. 
<laughs> no, uh, okay. the Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, that was wow. probably back in his drug days. Yeah. 1984 <laughs> to 1991, yeah. he, so maybe. He probably doesn't remember dating her. <laughs> <laughs> and she probably regrets passing up on that. Good Lord. Matthew Broderick, okay. <laughs> Ferris Bueller versus Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> made the right call. All right. Well, we'll be back to wrap things up on that note. Uh, and if it's your birthday, happy birthday. And we'll have our last National News Minute of the Day coming up on Mark's In the Morning. Luke Bryan.